All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I'm Council Member Rafael Salamenca, Chair of this committee. This morning, Landmark Subcommittee has been deferred. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of this committee. We have Constantinides, Deutsch, Ku, Landsman, Reynoso, Richards, Gredenchik, Chair Adams, Diaz, Chair Moya, and Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Acting Chair, Chair Deutsch for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today, we'll be voting on a number of items referred out of our subcommittees. We'll be voting to approve with modifications LUs 89 through 94 that block 675 application to Councilmember Johnson's district in Manhattan. These applications for zoning map changes, tax amendments, and special permits will facilitate the transfer of floor area for Hudson River Park as permitted by state law and the zoning resolution to upland development sites. The applications before us today would establish a new granting site and new receiving sites in the special Hudson River Park District, permit a wider range of uses and higher density on two development sites, require permanently affordable housing, and support certain identified improvements to and the maintenance of Hudson River Park within Manhattan District 4. We will be modifying the special permit plans for, section, for Site A, the Douglaston site on West 29th Street to reduce the tower height of the building to less than 600 feet. We will be modifying both of the applications on West 29th Street and West 30th Street to ensure that the specified park improvements are properly funded and that the additional financial contributions totaling $4 million will facilitate the completion of a stretch of the park between 32nd and 34th Street. Last, we'll be modifying the restrictive declarations associated with each site to ensure that open space mitigation funds con contributed by the developers are applied by the Parks Department on Chelsea Park and to better address child care impacts that may occur. Speaker Johnson cannot be here today, but I congratulate him on this important project, which will benefit Hudson River Park and all of its users. And we will now read his statement into the record. Today we're voting on two land use applications that I've been working on for years, even before I was sworn in as council member when I, chaired, when I was chair of Bronx Community Board 4. It presented a lot of challenges and involved a wide range of diverse stakeholders, but the proposals have the potential to produce substantial affordable housing, create more open green space, and help us achieve many long sought goals of our community. I'm extremely proud to say that after a long, rigorous process involving much negotiation, detailed and thoughtful input from the community and my colleagues in government, the projects on Block 675, La Liberian at 606 West 30th Street and Douglaston Development at 601 West 29th Street are are an all-around win for the people of my district and the city. While both projects have and will continue some of the nicest affordable housing units in the country, a main impress of these projects is to help complete Hudson River Park, putting, needed, putting much needed capital between the area from 29th to 34th Streets. With the additional investment, approximately 10% more will be coming to the park. We're seeing an unprecedented, unprecedented level of support for Hudson River Park from both state, city, and the private development community in the last two years. In addition, the Douglaston development will provide 12,500 square feet of lot area to allow the construction of a new permanent FDNY EMS facility to be the new homes of EMS Station 7, which is currently on West 23rd Street. EMS Station 7, which provides vital emergency service, will better equip to serve the west side of Manhattan as a result of this development. Both projects will also create approximately 310 units of desperately needed permanently affordable housing on the west side. Through this process, we were able to achieve an equitable distribution of affordable units throughout both buildings, exceeding the 65% distribution minimum. Both the market rate and affordable rate will provide the same fixtures and finishes, and discounts will be offered on fee-based amenities to families and individuals who live in the affordable units. Furthermore, to maintain the character of the surrounding neighborhood, Douglaston Development has redesigned its tower and decreased its maximum height to less than 600 feet, and the uh, Lalazarian, there we go, has maximized its development to include an out parcel and other otherwise would have been sandwiched between two towers. There were many partners involved in this effort. I want to thank Deputy Mayor Glenn, City Planning Chair Lago, my fellow elected officials in Hudson River Park Trust Pro um, President Madeline Wills, and the President Advocacy of Friends of Hudson River Park. I also want to thank uh, Community Board 4 uh, Chair Bert Lalazarian. 
Lazarin, and CB4 members of Compton, Betty McIntosh, J.D. Nolan, and Joe Restusia. Finally, I want to acknowledge Steve Char Charno, Jeff Levine from Douglaston Development, and Kevin Lalazarian for their spirit of cooperation to make sure we deliver to the best of the public and the best project possible. Thank you for your support. I really botched those names, but all right. <laughs> there we go. We will also be voting to approve the modifications, the South Portland Avenue rezoning LUs 108 through 110 in Councilmember Cumbles District in Brooklyn. This application is for a rezoning that would allow properties within the rezone areas to build 50 feet higher than the existing zoning allows. The rezonings will apply not only to the applicant site, but to a number of other properties on the block. The proposed rezoning area is located in a zone a neighborhood, which was the subject of 2007 Fort Green Clinton Hill neighborhood rezoning intended to prevent out of scale development. In connection with the present rezoning application, we heard many members of the community testify against it due to concerns about inappropriate bulk for this block and concerns that the hard worn contextual zoning would be undone. Witnesses who testified in favor testified about the applicant's particular project, not about any other proposed development in the larger rezoning area. The applicant's property will be developed with a 13-story mixed-use residential and community facility building with a total of 100 apartments, all of which would be affordable. The applicant will be complying with MIH option one, but will be providing many, many more affordable units than MIH option one requires. And in fact, one of the ac actions we will vote to approve today is the LUs 110, an application by HPD for the Article 11 tax exemptions, which will support this project. The tax exemption will exempt all of the land and proposed buildings except for commercial and community facilities components from real property taxes for a period of 40 years. Given that the applicant sites will provide 100% units, all of which will be affordable under the city's M squared term sheet and will include community facilities providing medical and social services, we believe that the burdens of the additional work are outweighed for this development site. According Accordingly, we will be modifying the rezoning applications to apply only to the project site. We will also be striking MIH option two from the zoning text map. We will be voting to approve LUs 111, the 180 to 188 Avenue of America's application for zoning map changes for properties in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan, the establishment of a new C2-5 commercial overlay and removal of a C1-5 commercial overlay would allow the operation of a gym and dance studio in an existing mixed-use building. We will be voting to approve LUs 112, the 1568 Broadway Place, Broadway Palace Theater tax amendment affecting property in Councilmember Powell's district in Manhattan. The applicant seeks a tax amendment to modify the special Times Square district signage requirement and the streets wall and setback requirements. These changes will facilitate renovations of an existing 42-story building and in connection with disapproval, the applicant will fully renovate the landmark Palace Theater interior and exterior. We'll be voting to approve LU 113, the 85 Mercer special permit application. This application seeks a use waiver to allow retail use on portions of the ground floor and sell of an existing five-story building on 85 Mercer Street in Council Member Chin's district in Manhattan. We'll be voting to approve LUs 107, the Seven Hills Mediterranean Grill, an application for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe in Council Member Rosenthal's district in Manhattan. We will be also voting to approve LU 114, the Lavo Restaurant application for revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe in Council Member Powell's district in Manhattan. Pursuant to LU rules, land use rules 11.10E, I call up LU 115. We will vote to approve the designation of the Emmett Building located at 95 Madison Avenue, Manhattan as a historic landmark. The 16-story limestone and terracotta office building constructed between 1911 and 1912 is located in Council Member Rivera's district. A hearing was held and closed yesterday. We will also be voting to approve LU 116, the landmark designation of the Hotel Seville, now James Nomad Hotel, located at 22 East 29th Street in Manhattan. It is located in Council Member Powell's district. We'll be voting to approve LUs 117, LUs 118, and LU 119, three landmark designation in Council Member Ayala's district. LU 117 is, is the designation as a historic landmark of public schools 109, now El Barrio 
R Space PS109, located at 215 East 99th Street in Manhattan. The building was constructed in, 18, in 1899 as a school. Since 2015, the school has been used as an affordable housing and studio space for local artists. LUS 118 is a designation of the Benjamin Franklin High School, now the Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. A two block long brick and limestone Georgian Revi Revival School located at 20, located at 260-300 Pleasant Avenue in Manhattan. LU 119 is the designation of the Richard Weber Harlem Packing House, located at 207-215 East 119th Street in Manhattan. Construction in 1895, the building was formerly a meat market that was part of a larger slaughterhouse, meat packing, and retail complex. We will also be voting to approve LU 120, the landmark designation of the Dr. Marquise T. Lewis House. The building is located at 404 55th Street in the Sunset Park section of Brooklyn in Councilmember Menchaca's district. Construction as a mansion in 1907, the Dr. Marquise T. Lewis House was later converted into an apartment building. We will also be voting to approve the LU 121, the designation of the Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg as a historic landmark completed in 1908 and is located at 209 Havemeyer Street on Williamsburg Bridge Plaza in Councilmember Reynoso's district. From our planning subcommittee, we'll be voting to approve East Village 1 and 2, reconsiders LUs 201-85417, HAM, 201-85418, HAM, 201-85436, HAM, 201-85419, HAM, 201-85420, HAM, 201-85423, HAM. East Village 1 and 2 are located in Councilmember Rivera's district in Manhattan. East Village 1 is comprised of approximately 150 existing dwelling units, which are part of the plan and project established in 1977 pursuant to Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The first action is the termination of the Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement with a new partial Article 11 tax exemption. The, sec the second action is the removal of a vacant parcel to the developed from to be developed from the plan and project. And the third action is to approve the conveyance of the vacant par parcel from the current owner to a new owner who will redevelop it with new buildings containing 11 units. East Village 2 also has three applicants. East Village 2 is comprised of approximately 150 exis existing dwelling units, which are part of the plan and project established in 1980 pursuant to Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The first action is the termination of Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement with the new par partial tax exemption, Article 11. The second action is the removal of one vacant parcel from the plan and, and project. The third action is to approve the conveyance of the vacant parcel from the current owner to a new owner who will redevelop it with a new building containing 23 units. The last application we will vote on today is La Cabana, which has three applicants, 201-8541-5 HAK, 201-8516 HAK, and 201-8516. 85435 HAK. The project site is in Councilmember Reynoso's district in Brooklyn. It is comprised of 167 dwelling units built in 1982 under Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law as part of plan and project. The first action is the termination of the Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement with a new parcel Article 11 tax exemption. The second, the second action is the removal of the two vacant parcels from the plan, and the plan and project. The third action is to approve the conveyance of the two vacant parcels from the current owner to a new owner who will redevelop them with a new building containing approximately 60 dwellings. These committees have been really busy, so I want to congratulate the chairs. Um, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Council Member Antonio Reynoso. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge the fact that we've been joined by the Arbor School from Williamsburg. Hello. Uh, <laughs> it's actually the school I went to when I was growing up in Williamsburg, PS19, Roberta Clemente, now known as the Arbor School. Um, and also Ralph Perez from uh, our Sergeant at Arms has his son and his grandchild both go to the Arbor School as well, so it's a, a family affair here. That's his son right there standing up. It, it's like a... It's, a, it's like a mini Ralph. Um, <laughs> uh, 
But uh, thank you for being here and uh, seeing uh, the work that we're doing in the City Council and taking this tour. I hope you enjoy it. And hopefully in the future, many of you would be politicians and, and the future City Council members. <laughs> yeah, run against me, please. Um, I'll be looking forward to it. Uh, Winnesburg has changed drastically in the last two decades and is hardly recognizable to those of us who grew up there. It is not just a physical character that has changed though. Long-term residents, particularly low-income folks, are increasingly being pushed out of the neighborhood. La Cabana represents one of the last havens for low-income residents in my district. When I was approached by the owners of La Cabana and HPD with an opportunity to preserve the affordability for over, uh, for over 20 years, it was a no-brainer. I would do whatever I can to protect existing deeply affordability um, in my district. The appeal of Williamsburg has always been its diversity and the preservation of the 167 units at La Cabana will ensure we have a reservoir of deeply affordable housing in Williamsburg for years. As part of the, reservation, the preservation of La Cabana, the two parking lots will be split off from the existing development for potential new development in the future. The owners have agreed to a restrictive declaration being put on the property which contains a number of provisions regarding future development. Within two years of the approval of this tax exemption, the owners will submit a viable development plan to HPD, which will outline an affordability program with 25% of the units at 40% AMI, 10% of the units at 80, 10% at 100, and 5% at 135. If the owner does not submit a good faith proposal within two years, the restrictive declaration will be extended for a period of time in which the owner is non-compliant. When HPD and the owner agree to terms regarding future development, HPD will come back to this committee to resize the tax exemption to aid in subsidizing the affordable component of this project. The restricted decoration will run with the land for a period of 10 years. I want to be clear, future development of the parking lots will in no way impact the affordability of La Cabanas. Furthermore, I will be in close communication with HPD in the coming months to ensure the owners are complying with the terms of the agreement. I am very pleased we are preserving the long-term affordability of La Cabanas and providing further opportunities for the creation of new affordable housing. However, I am deeply uncomfortable with the process that was conducted to reach the agreement. At no point were the residents of La Cabana engaged on this proposal. I was approached about this deal weeks before the hearing to approve the Article 11. I was strongly advised HPD and the ownership to reconsider the way they go about engaging residents and elected officials around these types of projects. This process lacked the democracy and transparency that I always strive to incorporate in my decision making. We as elected officials should never, put in, should never be put in the position of having to decide between an objective win for our constituents and an open and transparent decision making process. My office will be engaging with the residents of La Cabana in the coming months to ensure folks understand all the details outlined in this agreement and address any concerns they may have. It is my expectation that HPD and the ownership at La Cabana will join me in this effort and put forth a good faith effort to ensure the existing residents are meaningfully included in this process moving forward. I want to thank the committee for taking the time to examine this proposal and I encourage my colleagues on the committee to vote in favor of Article 11 exemption at La Cabana and I also want to thank uh, Chair Moya for the great work that he did in the subcommittee and uh, Councilmember Salamanca for the work here today. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Reynoso, congratulations on this project. Um, you know, I, uh, I agree with what you're saying in terms that there should always be community involvement when projects are affecting communities, whether directly or indirectly. Uh, but it's also a good day when Williamsburg gets affordable housing. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank all you right. very much. I want to recognize that we've been joined by uh, Councilmember Torres. Um, all right, bye, guys. Um, next, we're going to hear from uh, Chair Adams. Thank you very much, Chair Salamanca. Uh, I too would like to thank uh, my committee on landmarks, public siting, and maritime uses for the work um, that we have done over the past few months. It's been a lot. It's been very different, uh, but we have uh, we've stood the course. And I would really, really like to sincerely thank them for their hard work. You know, it's it's not easy uh, determining uh, landmarking for the city of. New York, the most beautiful city um, in the country, in my opinion. We have some of the most beautiful buildings 
right here in the city of New York. I'm so very, very proud to sit on a committee that appreciates the historical property and preservation of these buildings. And I am very, very happy to sit here and say that we had, I believe, a record number uh, of votes uh, on these properties over the past few months. And I'm very, very proud to have led this committee. Chair Salamanca, it is my privilege to be a part of the uh, Land Use Committee team, and I thank you very much for your work as well, and I thank you all of my colleagues for all of your support. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Adams. Now we're gonna hear from uh, Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Chair Salamanca, and to Chair Adams. Uh, I have a couple of agenda items here, and I wanted to thank you all for your support. Um, East Village 1 and 2 is preservation and creation of affordable housing in my district, which is incredibly important, and Councilmember Reynoso knows what I'm going through because he's going through something very similar in terms of displacement. And of course, transparency with HPD is always going to be, I think, our focus. Sometimes affordability, we get so desperate for affordability that, you know, we, we want to say yes to projects that are going to bring equity um, into our communities, but we really need to work with these agencies in the most transparent and accountable way possible. So I want to thank you for being honest about the process. And so um, I'm asking, of course, for everyone's support, East Village 1 and 2. These buildings that are being preserved are low-income families, families of color, people that have been there for multiple generations, and it's very important to the East Village Lower East Side uh, neighborhood. And of course, uh, for the other items, I want to thank everyone for their patience and uh, for your support in the end, and looking forward to working with you all in future projects. Thank you. All right, I will now uh, call a vote in accordance with recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve with modifications that have been described, LUs 89 through 94 and 108 through 109, and to approve LUs 107, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121. And pre-LUs East Village 1, pre-LUs East Village 2, and pre-LUs La Cabaña. La Caba yeah, Cabaña. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye on all. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on all. Coup. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Vote oh, aye. Aye on all. Congratulations, all. Torres. Aye on all. Grodenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye on all. Diaz. Permission to, to explain my vote? Councilmember Diaz, explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to congratulate Councilmember Rivera on Village 1 and Village 2. I think that Councilmember Rivera has been demonstrating that she's uh, a wonderful and exceptional council member who, ca who cares about her community. And with these two projects, her committee keep in keeps improving. And I am very proud, very honored to serve next to her <laughs> and to vote yes and no. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, council member Diaz. He, he, yeah, he's, he's voting. Moya. I and all. Rivera. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. Also, thank you, Acting Chair Deutsch, for the for siding over the meeting the other day. I can't believe I forgot to thank you. My main remarks. I and all. A vote of 13 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's meeting, and I will leave the roll open for 15 minutes. <laughs> 